Pilots. This is Pete with BananaHobby.com. This is your box and build review of the FMS 3D airplane line. This is an, a line that I am very proud to be a part of and uh, to be bringing you these, these box and build and then the flight reviews. This now is the FMS SBOC 342. This comes in at your 1300 millimeter size range and it's at 51.2 inches. And I own a ton of airplanes um, from 3D Hobby Shop and from Extreme Flight and companies like that in the 51 inch category. And it's one of the premier sizes in these 3D airplanes. And the SBOC, I've flown in everything from small sizes to profile to 35% gas size. And SBOCs fly great all around. Um, they snap roll really fast and they stop on a dime and just the flight character is really good. And I'm really excited about this line because this is something that I really love to do is to fly 3D. Please check out the other videos as well. Uh, FMS now has the Yak-54, the Extra 300, and then the SBOC 342. So this will be the box and build for the SBOC 342. And this right here comes in that classic color of the 342, and it is made out of EPO Flex Foam. It's this uh, material really is very light and keeps it extremely durable and resistant to uh, um, any kind of dings and things like that, and still be very rigid to be able to perform the uh, 3D capable maneuvers. So we're going to be doing a lot of 3D type stuff with this. A lot of the design that they put into this airplane is really nice as far as the connectors for the servos and things like that. Everything goes together with screws and it builds in almost like less than a probably, I think about an hour at your maybe at your uh, you know workstation, you'd probably be done. So with that, let's just go ahead and start taking stuff out of this for the first portion, which is the what's out of the box review. I believe the battery of choice here is going to be a 4 cell 2600, but once we get into the build portion, we'll actually take a look here. There we go. This is on your standard 4 channel setup, so you can opt to get it here at Banana Hobby as in a ready to fly format, or if you choose to um, use your own transmitter and receiver and radio gear and uh, battery, you can do that as well. Let's go ahead and cut the box open here. FMS looks always has a, a top layer here of the cardboard. It keeps everything from getting damaged as far as, uh, you know how shipping couriers are. They um, sometimes stack things and things get smashed on top of it. But this is pretty rigid here. Let's go ahead and take that open. Nice. Wow, I, th I just got shocked there. <laughs> Static electricity, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and just start cutting parts out here. Let's go ahead and get that taped down. The first thing that's going to come out is going to be our main wing. Nice. If you watch the, any of the other builds, the build on this pretty much goes together the same way. A uh, couple of variances just uh, from here and there because of the different type of aircraft. But this is what I'm talking about as far as this airplane being a really good 3D aerobatic airplane and also just a really good sport flyer. If you look at the size of this wing, it is very wide. So it, this airplane floats very well. Um, and it actually 3Ds extremely well. Um, we're going to go ahead and set this aside. As you see, it's pre-painted in the classic 342 colors. And we're going to get the other wing out. Okay, so this is the other wing, and this is pretty much ready to go to. Um, decals pre-applied. Uh, you know what I found? These, these FMS 3103 servos, they're in the mini size category. They're extremely fast, and they've been extremely durable, too. Um, you know, actually, looking at this now, there is another channel up here for another. There's a rectangular carbon spar that runs the length of the leading edge here. And then in the ailerons, there is another rectangular carbon spar in here to keep it nice and light and also to keep the, uh, the torsion rigidity to keep it nice and stiff there. And that's what we want on a good 3D performing airplane. Okay, out comes our manual. We're going to refer to this a little bit later. There's also an ESC programming manual in there that we will look at. Okay, this is your rudder. And it looks like the build-wise, it's pretty much really close to the same as the extra because we will be gluing these uh, the hinges here into position. 
I always like to check the hinges once they come out of the box. They're, they seem to be a little bit stiff, so we're going to actually just move it around a little bit. And if you watch, they used um, rubber cement. So in this case here with the rubber cement, if there's any runoff on the rubber cement, you can actually just grab it with the needle nose and just kind of pop it right off here. But these feel okay. We're going to set that aside. And our horizontal stabilizer. And sometimes if you can't get them out of the bag, it's best to cut the bag because the, the fit bit sometimes is uh, very tight and very close there. Okay, so we have one of your horizontal stabilizers. This is EPO foam hinged. And then they also you run a bead of glue along the uh, hinge here to keep it nice and durable there. So this is one horizontal stabilizer. We will be inserting a, a composite spar into this side for the build. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Okay, wheel pants, main landing gear with the wheel pants already pre-installed. Again, what I like about this so much is the, the low build time, of course, and then the scale appearance is beautiful. And this is all plastic. It's all ABS plastic, so it's not foam, and you can't dent it. You know, so it actually looks really nice, too, pre-painted like that. Okay, we have one main wing joiner spar, which is composite, and then the horizontal tail section joiner. And let's get the fuselage out now. There we go. What a nice looking s bock here. There we go. Slide that plastic off. Look at that beautiful pilot that's already pre-installed. And then you have your, uh, your cockpit, the panels and everything, um, the instrument panel, decals. Just looks really nice. The decal job that FMS has done is really nice. It's, Paint is nice and the decals are nice, so it makes for a really good looking model. So that's your fuselage that we will be working with here. Let's go ahead and set that down. Make sure it doesn't tumble. Okay. These are the trailing edge uh, wing fairings that's going to be going into the, the fuselage. We'll talk about gluing that in a little bit later during the build. Here we have your spinner. The backing and the screws, the screws for the propeller. Propeller is here along with a tube of rubber cement. Three of them will be used, and then one of them is a spare. It's a freebie, so it's a spare propeller. In case if you nick one or something like that, you can actually just go ahead and change that out. This bag has all of our hardware, your wing bolts, your um, control surface horns, and your servo Servo horns and everything is in here. So we'll talk about what's in here a little bit later. Okay, let me get this stuff out of the way here once I've made a big mess here. So again, you see overall everything laid out on the table here. This s box we're talking about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven major components, and uh, you're pretty much installing your own radio system just about. Um, so at this time, Let's go ahead and change the camera angle here. Let's just get hands on and start this build. Let's go ahead and jump right into the build here. We're going to go ahead and open the manual here and see what FMS would like for us to do. There is an insert here that's the ESC manual, so we want to make sure you set that aside and not lose that. We will be utilizing that possibly um, in a little bit here. Let's first take a look here. The battery size is 4S2600. Okay, um, the first step here, we would like to install the main gear. So this way that it gives us a platform here, we can actually just set down and uh, be easier to work on here. I have my trusty box that I've used in many builds already. This is the portion of, a, of an airplane box that I got and then I cut it apart. <coughs> to use it as an airplane cradle, so it works great. Okay, first of all, take note there is a hatch down here. This hatch will reveal the wing bolt section area and it's also the where your receiver will be mounted. It's magnetic, so we're gonna pop that off to, from the get-go here. And we're going to install the main wheel pants here, or the main, wing, the main landing gear. This part here, I like to really would prefer to install this 
while sitting down on a chair and then having the fuselage on my lap because then you can apply equal pressure and then press it down into place without actually denting or damaging the fuselage. But in this case here, this went in there pretty well here, so we're going to give it a press. And it's actually perfect. It's already pretty flush, so we're going to leave it at that. We're going to go into our goodie bag here that contains all of the control horns and nuts and bolts and screws, and we're going to just empty everything out here onto the counter. And you'll find that FMS has included a Phillips screwdriver, which you can use, or you could uh, use your own tools. I usually have a few sizes of uh, screwdrivers laid out here. This bag has the main landing gear bracket, the hold down bracket. So this is what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and open this up. Empty that out. And then go ahead and empty the screw bag out here. Only four screws are needed. However, FMS always gives you a couple of spares. Uh, as well as another bag of spare goodies like control horns and clevises and things like that that you might go through and you might break. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and just press the bracket right into position just like that. We will insert all four screws. And have them ready to be used with a screwdriver. There we go. Okay, they're lined up pretty good there. I'm going to go ahead and grab my screwdriver. And I'm going to now, I will cradle this because I don't want to put this type of down pressure on here and uh, have it sit in the saddle here. It's better to just have it sitting on my hand. Okay, we're going to go ahead and tighten these four screws down here. We'll just do one side at a time. go. And one more. And you'll not want to tighten them down all the way. You just want to get all four of them down close to being tight. And then once you get the last of the four tightened to that point, now you can go ahead and go back and tighten them down. There you go. Tighten them down to equal pressure. And we are good. That's how quickly your main landing gear installs. And we're going to leave this, we're going to leave her actually sitting um, belly side up for now because we're moving on to the next step in the manual. And it is actually to, okay, actually we're not, we're going to flip it back because we're going to install the rudder here. Okay. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab the rudder. The rudder has three pre-glued in hinges and there are three pre-drilled holes here in the back of the, uh, of the vertical stabilizer. And then down here, you're going to find two Phillips head screws right here that are in there. Those are actually your hold down. You're going to tighten those down to the tail wheel for the steering there. So we just back those out just a little bit, make sure they're out of the way. And then this portion here included is this tube of, of uh, it's basically rubber cement, rubber contact cement. So this is the glue that we are going to use. I'm going to go ahead and apply some of this rubber cement here right onto the hinge here. And you want to make sure you don't put too much because if it gets into the hinges, it's going to be a sticky situation there. However, because it is rubber cement, it will still flex and still bend. Um, a tip here before you start this is if you have any household oil, um, you can actually just put a drop right in the hinge pivot area. And uh, once you put the glue on there, it won't, it won't actually adhere to that point there. So now, let's go ahead and line up the tail wheel first with the hole and, and then each hinge at a time. Just about there, and oh, the tail just wobbled out. Okay, there we go, and we'll press. Get up here and press. There we go. 
that's it. And then we're going to try to check our gap here and make sure we have sufficient movement in the rudder. Once you move it like that a couple of times, you can actually see the gap that you need to have. So we're going to leave the rudder here with just about that much in the gap and let the rubber cement actually dry. Um, we're going to go down to these two screws here that holds the, the tail steerable tail wheel to the rudder here. And we're just going to tighten those down. There we go. There's one on each side, so tighten both sides down. Okay, we are pretty much good there, so we'll check our gap one more time. Looking good. Okay, let's see. Next step. Okay. We are going to install the tail section. They want us to put the control horns on the ailerons first, but we're not mounting the main wings yet. So let's go ahead and install the tail section. So we're going to go ahead and flip one more time back into the saddle. Okay, you want to grab your tail section and then your uh, tail shot, the tail, um, the tail spar here. Insert that into your tail section and then kind of gauge how far it goes in. There we go. And then we will just now line up the two and then slide. If you have some 3M blue tape, you can mark off the center section for that, this tail spar here, which is a good thing, too. Okay, and we're there, so we're going to just press. Okay. That's how quickly it goes on there. And then this bag, the PA 3.015, these are the screws for our tail section. There are three in there. One's a spare. Set that down. We're going to insert this Phillips screw right into there. These are self tapping, so all you need to do is set it into the holes there and then go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, and hang on to this a little bit. Relieve some of that pressure from the top of the fuselage. Okay, that's pretty tight there. Okay, once over, check, and that's it. Your tail section is now installed, your horizontal stabilizer. And your SBOC is just awaiting the main wing installation now. Um, now let's go ahead and install the control horns to the main wing here. Now you will locate the bag that's labeled aileron, and we will install the control surface horns to the left and the right ailerons. And go ahead and open this bag here. And once again, your push rods are in here for the ailerons, so you want to keep this with the bag so you don't mix up the push rods uh, at a later time when we're doing the install of the, the push rods here. Okay, get everything out, set those together. Okay, the other bag has your control surface horn screws here, and I believe they are different lengths. Ones will Two screws will be longer. However, there are three. There's a couple of spares in here. So we want to make sure we find the longer screws and the shorter screws and split them up here. OK. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and grab our control horn facing down towards the servo and the control backing that we will be tightening this down to. One side of the backing is there's a lip on it, and that's the side that we actually want to be facing down because the side that's facing up will be completely flush to the aileron here. All right, let's go ahead and grab one longer screw into the root section of the 
control horn, and then the shorter one goes in the trailing edge section. Let's go ahead and grab the screwdriver here. Okay, that one has inserted correctly. There we go. Both of them has. So now we'll just go and tighten it down. And when you tighten this down, you want to make sure you don't over tighten them. Once you see that the control surface horn, the the bottom area is starting to sink into the foam a little bit and start pulling a little bit of stress cracks around it, that, that's when you know it's pretty much tight enough, just like that. So that's one horn set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and grab our other wing. And we will do the same with this wing here. never imagine how quickly you can build a beautiful 3D airplane within an hour and then actually be out flying. It's something very special about that. My wood built up airplanes, it'll still take me three days to set up and mount everything, run all the servos and everything. There we go. Tighten that down. And that's pretty good there. And that one is good there as well. Okay, here's a tip for you. With full um, EPO hinges like this right here, once you have everything attached, you want to sit here and you want to bend this probably to about 45 degrees. Just go back and forth a few times, not too many times, probably about tw uh, 20 times is enough. It's just to break in that EPO foam hinge from the get-go. This way it relieves some of the stress, uh, the load on your servo so that your servo can actually be running more efficient and have better centering. This is just for EPO hinges. We will do the same for the tail section as well. Actually, you can actually do that as needed because sometimes you don't need to. Let's see, Let's check the tail. Yeah, the tail's pretty good. So we're gonna leave that alone. All right. Our next area right here, we are going to grab the bag. This is the wing, the rear, surf, the rear section of the wing saddle. Um, I just call them the fairings. So we're going to actually glue this in. And this part, you have to differentiate real quick here, which one's the left and the right. So we're going to trial fit. Let's see here. Actually, that fit in there pretty good. I think that's the one. And then once you have it trial fitted, and it's the right one to the right side. Yep, that's it. Just go ahead and leave it in there. And then um, just go ahead and we're going to go ahead and just uh, glue that down in there. It, we're just going to use the supplied rubber cement here. The instructions say to use a brush to apply it, but we don't need to. This is plenty. And if you watch here, I'm only going to use the glue up to a certain point here. I'm not going to go any farther than right there. And the reason why is the uh, the front of the wing is going to be sitting up against here. If you have glue running over here, once you get the main wing mounted on there, it'll actually get stuck to the fuselage. So we don't want that. And also this portion here, the main wing will be pressing up against it, against here. So you just, you know, like I said, you don't want too much glue up here to where it's running over because then you'll actually get your main wing stuck. At 51.2 inches, it's good to have the main wings removable just in case uh, you, know, you have any types of uh, transportation issues with a smaller vehicle. Okay, so that is in place. We're going to go ahead and let that dry and tear here. And uh, we're going to move on to the next step here in the instructions. And it tells us to, we are now going to join the main wings to the fuselage. So let's go ahead and do that now. We will now go ahead and join the main wing on the s block here together with the fuselage. So make sure you have ample enough space here. I'm going to grab one wing and set her aside here and then grab the other one and set her on to the opposite side. So now you want to make sure you get your wing spar here. But before we do that, we can actually go ahead and just insert one wing first. And uh, the aileron leads, it actually includes a Y harness. 
so it's uh, it's up actually up to you to whether or not you want to use the Y harness. If you're running it on the stock radio system, you will be using the Y splitter. If you're not, and uh, you have your own computer radio, you have your choice of actually running um, aileron mixing on it so that you can uh, fine dial in the amount of control throw per aileron on each side. So right now we're just going to go ahead and insert. I have the wire. <coughs> Excuse me for the aileron coming out from the bottom, and then now we will grab the carbon spar here. And we'll insert it into the wing until it just about stops. Yeah, it's good there. I will press this all the way in. Pretty good there. And uh, this is the screw area here. You can see that it's pretty detailed. Um, I always like to just do a once over, make sure everything's tight which it really is, so I don't really need to do that. The FMS does a really good job with that. Their quality assurance is great here. Let's go ahead and insert that into the wing spar. Make sure it's lined up here. And then we gotta get that wire lined up with the hole. There we go. And then we're gonna press. Make sure the wire's still out of the way. It sure is. And now we can go ahead and just press this all the way in here. It would be good to, if you had anybody, somebody to help you here <coughs> to grab one side of it. It makes it a lot easier. There we go. There we go. And we are in position here. Check the gap. Everything looks good. Awesome. That went together really nice. Now what I'm going to do is grab my saddle once more. Let me go ahead and flip the s -box. And down here you will find your four mounting screw holes that are right here underneath in this uh, chamber here. And in this bag you will have uh, there your 3.0 times 60 wing bolts. And you, there are five of them in here. You only need four. And all we do is just insert these wing bolts here. One of them is a spare, so keep that around. There we go. Okay, we're all lined up here. Get your screwdriver. And this portion here, I always say this, um, it takes a little bit of manual labor because you got to, the, the screws actually got to go in pretty far. And it takes some time per screw. And a lot of times at this point, you know, we'll, we would be really tempted to use an electric screwdriver or a drill of some sort. And I stay away from that. And the reason why is, you're ultimately screwing this screw down into a plastic bracket and then it's going down into foam. And you can so easily over tighten these and then you can actually end up with a real problem if you over tighten them. So I always just tend to use these uh, handheld human powered screwdrivers. There we go, we got one all the way down. I mean, I guess if you can gauge how far you want to go with a screwdriver before you want to stop with the electric screwdriver, you can always stop it right down where you're, you know, just about to where you know that you're going to actually use um, your hand to be able to feel how much torque is going into there. <coughs> there we go. Okay, the third one is all the way down just about. Yep, we're down, and then now we're up to the final wing bolt here. This gives your forearms a real good workout here. Or this part here, have your son or daughter help you, or a friend. Put them to work. <laughs> Everybody can get hands on and help build this plane. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go down to the tightening portion, portion where I'm gonna just feel, I can kind of feel exactly how much it needs to be tightened down. And I'm gonna call that pretty good there. After your first flight, you always wanna do a once over anyway. Check all the screws, make sure everything's tight. 
Okay, so now that the wing is bolted down to the fuselage, you can see that the cowling is actually magnetic, and you have your big 760 kV brushless outrunner down here. This is a great time to actually do a once over, make sure all the screws are tight. There we go. And as you can see, I don't mount the propeller until it's the last thing that I actually go into because during the build here and then during the setup of the radio system, you don't really want that big old propeller spinning around. So now that we're to this point, we are coming up to installing our servo control horns. And uh, this is the time that you want to get your radio system plugged in and pretty much ready to go with uh, start setting up the servos and the control surfaces and the motor. So go ahead and do that now and then uh, we'll see you back over here for the servo horn installation. This part here, we will empty the contents of this bag which contains your, your servo horns and then uh, some screws in here. Be very careful when you open this bag because there are some very small 1.5 millimeter uh, set screws here. Okay. And what these connectors basically are, they're, they've been, we've been using these in the industry for such a long time. They're basically known as your easy connectors. But right now, a couple of tips are, um, you can see this it comes out of the box a little bit wobbly because there's the gap between the nut and the easy connector is a little bit too far. So what I like to do is I like to get a screwdriver into one side and grab a small pair of pliers or something. I just happen to have this RC car tool here that fits perfectly. And I want to tighten these down to just where they're, they're, uh, they have enough friction, but it takes away that slop from, uh, from the movement here. So that's too tight, there we go. I like to see it just kind of droop a little bit. That tells me that it's tight enough. So that's one. We will do this to all four. You know, again, this is something that's just, you know, what depending on how fast you want to build it is something that you don't really have to do, but I tend to do it just because it makes me feel better um, as about the, the gap there and the, the play in it. And with 3D flying, you want to try to make sure you're, I mean, with these quality servos, you want these to, your control surface to actually center to their best ability. And that this is the only way to do it. <coughs> there we go. And then there's another pointer right after this. Let's see, let's get that there. Okay. It's too tight. I'm going to back it off a little bit. And that's pretty good there. Um, at this point, you can get into this spare bag here. And uh, it, what's included in here is a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Um, you can use that, or if you have your own 1.5 millimeter tool, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And what I do is, if you have some, if you have any blue Loctite, this is the time where you actually put a drop just a little bit onto each set screw and then uh, into the easy connector. But don't tighten these down all the way. I just want these to sit inside for me to be ready to tighten down to the push rod here. Okay. You, if you don't have Loctite, you can also use the included rubber cement. Just put a very small amount on there and uh, it just something to keep the, the set screws from vibrating loose sometimes. And uh, Loctite always works great. If you don't have any, run to your local hardware store and uh, pick up a little tube like that or your local ho hobby store. And if you still don't have any, again, the included rubber cement works good. And uh, many cases, you can actually just use white Elmer's glue. That works just fine too. It's anything that we can get onto the threads and then when it's actually in here to keep them from vibrating loose. So that's pretty much good there. Okay, so we're gonna call that good to go. And here's the other pointer. I get my super glue. Be very careful with this point. Um, or you can use the included glue once again. Once you have the nuts back here in position here, um, I always just put a little tiny bit of super glue on the end of the threads here to keep the screws from backing off. This part, be very careful. You get super glue on that hinge and it's not going to move. Um, you can also get put a drop of oil in the rotating area before you do this, which is a good idea. A little press for time here, so we're not going to do that. 
right, now let's go ahead and install our servo horn to the servo now. We will go ahead and try to find the most parallel line between the servo and your aileron here. And uh, using your own radio system, I can see that we have to do a little bit of uh, sub trimming. So we're going to go ahead and go into our sub trim menu. And to get that as close as we can, eyeballing it to your aileron. There we go. So that's pretty good there. You're pretty much just looking for a 90 degree angle here with the servo horn and your servo. Let's go ahead and install our horn screw here, servo horn screw. Okay, when you're tightening this, tightening this down here, I'd like to grab the servo once I get down to the tightening portion. This way you keep it from uh, actually moving and uh, putting pressure on the servo when you're tightening it. And at the same time, make sure that the servo is tightened to the bay here, which it is. A uh, real nice setup here because the actual servo bay is actually made out of plastic, so the screws actually really go down uh, nice and tight here. Okay, on the control surface here, we're going to look to use the second from the bottom hole. So the second hole, for second hole from the bottom up. I'm going to pop the clevis on here. There we go. Press the retainer all the way front with that little rubber O-ring. And this is how easy the easy connectors work. All we're going to do now is move the aileron enough to where we could insert the push rod into the little easy connector and once it's there all we need to do is center it move it a couple of times you could feel it at the edge here hold it when it's center and then just go ahead and tighten this 1.5 millimeter down until it hits the push rod and it's pretty much there and once it's there I'll grab it from here and then I'll keep the push rod from bending when I tighten down this this uh, set screw here and that's how easy the connectors go on and now we have control surface throw. Obviously that's a lot of throw, so we're going to have to look at how much uh, dual rate we're going to have here. If you're using your own radio system and you want to lessen the travel, all you would have to do is move this connector, the easy connector, in towards the holes here, and then uh, you can move this clevis actually farther away from the control horn, and that, that'll lessen the control throw there. Okay, so that's ready to go. Go ahead at this time. Install the rest, the remaining servo horns to your elevator and the other aileron on your rudder and uh, we'll meet you back over here and talk about throttle, throttle calibration. By now your s -Boc 342 should be just about complete. You have your control surfaces all, con all uh, connected to your servos already. And uh, this portion here, as you can see, I don't have my propeller on there yet. I have built it. They're just uh, individual blades. You bolt down to the base plate here with the nylon locking nuts behind. And I don't, I have not installed this yet for a reason. If you do, when you first plug in your system and you get your initializing beeps coming from your motor, then you're ready to go. That means everything's fine. If for some reason you plug everything in uh, without the propeller installed yet and you have control surface movements but you don't have any throttle, this portion we call throttle calibration. What you want to do is make sure, again, leave the propeller off. If you have it on there for some reason, I suggest for you to remove it. Um, if you really don't want to remove it, stand behind the airplane and definitely have somebody hold on to the airplane just for precautionary measures here. What we do is we turn on the radio. Do not plug anything in, on, in yet. Turn on the radio and then you want to have your throttle stick all the way in the highest up position. And then you plug in the, the, the ESC to the motor, or sorry, the battery to the, to the ESC. And what you will hear will be two fast tones. As soon as you hear those two fast tones, you want to lower your throttle stick to the lowest position and you'll hear two more tones. And right after you hear that, it'll either be, either be followed by the initializing uh, melody or at that time you unplug everything, put your throttle stick back down and then you can turn it on the normal way that you always do. Um, throttle stick down, turn on the transmitter and then plug it in and the ESC will know your throttle stick calibration at that time. So let's go ahead and do it now. So you can get an idea of uh, what to hear here. Okay, my transmitter is on. My throttle stick is at the full position, and we will plug it in. Listen for the tones. Okay, we're gonna lower it to low stick, and that's it. 
uh, had many calls with FMS products with the ESCs not running, and that's exactly what it is. It's called throttle calibration, so now it reads your endpoints <laughs> on your throttle stick, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So now we can pretty much, I'm going to go ahead and unplug at this time to be safe, and then we're going to go ahead and just mount the propeller. I have the magnetic cowling back on. I'm going to line her up and just slide it in. And the propeller top here will just, uh, spinner top will just snap into place. And this is actually your prop spinner with the nut on the inside. And believe it or not, it is just hand tightened. I know a lot of you are thinking, wow, you know, you don't even have a, a uh, propeller bolt on there. You don't really need one. Uh, you can actually tighten this down pretty good with your hands. And the rotation of the propeller is going counterclockwise. So it's working against the threads on the screw. So it'll actually not be able to come loose or it shouldn't come loose at all. And I haven't had any with the other airplanes, so we're just going to grab it, tighten it down the best we can. There we go, and pretty much done there. Now let's go ahead and do a systems check. Stay clear of the prop propeller. I like to always stand behind, which is the safest way, and uh, plug it in. Make sure nobody's in front of you. Okay, go ahead and hang on to it. We have the tones. And let's go ahead and put the battery cover right back on just like that. You can do a control surface check here. Elevator, good. Rudder, we're good. Aileron, we're good. We're definitely going to play with some of the numbers here with the dual rate and for uh, expo and things like that. And that'll be in the flight review. So with that, let's give it a little bit of a power up here. Okay, plenty of power. Everything's ready to go. Again, my name is Pete. Thank you for joining me for this box and build with the FMS SBOC 342. Be sure to check out the flight review with these full line of 3D airplanes. Um, I'm extremely excited to see what we can do with these airplanes and what kind of 3D stuff we can actually throw at them. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe here as well. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment box underneath. We will see you at the flight line.